Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up, what's up? Welcome in Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. This is the college football big game preview for week number nine. Okay. I'm pumped. Play that jam. That's right. Every week, baby. That's the way it goes. You can find more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, is right over there. Go hit like or subscribe or whatever it's called on both of those. Uh, you can find us on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube right now, go ahead and hit subscribe. We would appreciate that. Leave some comments. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Tell us uh, what you think about the previews. Tell us who you like to win the games this weekend. Let us know because we need some help. Badly. But we'll get into that in the game. I need help. I'm fine. Yeah, you you okay. I've been I'm a not. loser for a long time. It's all right. <laughs> the show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. They got great stuff going on down there. Like I said, Tunica, Mississippi, fantastic place to visit. Go check it out. Tunicatravel.com. Let's fire into this bad boy. Let's uh let's start it off with the horseshoe. Come on. Let's go to the shoe. Wisconsin at Ohio State. Ohio State currently a 14 and a half point favorite. It's 11 a.m. on Fox. It's the big noon kickoff in Ohio Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. Ohio State. Nine and one straight up and eight and two against the spread of their last ten meetings with Wisconsin. Ohio State six and one against the spread so far this year. They did not cover against Florida Atlantic. They have covered everything ever since. They are rolling right now. Wisconsin got caught last week by Illinois. Uh, if you look at the stats, you wouldn't believe it. And they got caught by not taking some chances. Like it, it, sometimes when you're the better team, you got to take some uh, some risks. You got to go for it instead of settling for 20 and 23 yard field goals, whatever it was. Uh, Wisconsin just wasn't ready to play. And I, I think they might have been looking ahead to this one. Would you agree? Yeah, I think they were trying to play safe. I think and, they were and too. I think, I think that that's just not a smart way to do it. No, not at all. But and I think it, it cost them. We went to see Ohio State in person in, uh, in Evanston, Illinois last week. They're fast. They're really fast. But they can be moved. They can be got on the lines. Yeah. And Wisconsin are the kings of doing that. I'm crazy um, excited to watch this offensive line against that defensive front. That's all I want to see. Did you see the time of possession in the Wisconsin-Illinois game? Well, Wisconsin's going to dominate time of possession in every game they play. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're I number mean, they're, one in the country right now. Yeah, but I think they, we, we talk about Army and Navy and the military academies because of the way they play football. But Wisconsin will hang 40 on you and control the time of possession forever. Yeah. So, I mean, I you know. Even with Wisconsin's turnovers last week, which eventually led to them losing the ball game, still number 10 in the country in turnover yeah. margin. Ohio State is number four in that regard. Uh, Wisconsin, offensive yards per play, they're number 45 in the country at 6.12. Ohio State, defensive yards per play is number two. Ohio State, offensive yards per play, they're number seven. Wisconsin, defensive yards per play, number one. So on a yards per play basis, these are the two best defenses in the country. And I could not be more excited about yep. this. I mean, they it, it is going to be a lot of fun. Uh let's go ahead and, and make some picks here. Like I'm I'm going Wisconsin to cover. I love that I'm getting more than two touchdowns. Yes, sir. Um and I'm guessing you're doing the same thing. I'm doing Wisconsin, the same thing. Wisconsin to cover, Ohio State to win. You like Wisconsin, don't you? I'm gonna I'm gonna call the upset. All right. All right, I'm with but you. But I hate myself if it happens and I didn't say it. I Look, I know only a dog and a fool return to the vomit over and over again. All right? And walking in front of Ohio State is like walking in front of a train. I get it. I've done it, and it hadn't been great. But, you know. But some, at at some point, they're sometimes good. Sometimes when you're dumb, you don't learn. Yeah. It, it, almost every college football team loses at some point. And I don't see this Ohio State team losing many games. But if they're not going to go undefeated, I think it's going to be this one. It could be this one at home where you're comfortable. Where well, you're, not yeah. just at home and comfortable, but you now were all amped up for this coming game. And then now you're like, man, they didn't show up last week. We got yeah. some dogs. They're overrated. Let's start worrying about Penn State. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's how you get got. Now, you're right about that. All right, let's move into game number two. 
Auburn at LSU. LSU currently an 11-point favorite. It's 2.30 p.m. on CBS at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. LSU has won and covered three of the last four against Auburn. They're 5-0 and straight up, 4-1 and against the spread, their last five in Baton Rouge. LSU, yards per play on offense, number two in the country. I mean, just they are – they can't be stopped nope. right now. Nobody can stop these nope. guys. Auburn defensive yards per play, number 23. Not bad. Not terrible. Uh, they hadn't played an offense like this. No, sir. But uh, Auburn offensive yards per play, number 51. That's 6.04 yards per play, which is crazy. 6.04 yards per play, you know, four years ago, I mean, that would have been top 15, top 20 in the country. Yep. And they're 51. Uh, LSU defensive yards per play, a lot of people wouldn't realize this. Number 14. Yeah. Number 14 in the country. No, it's still not terrible. Yeah, 4.48. People 4. give them 8. a lot of crap, man. They talk about this defense like it's trash. And they, they're they not trash. Up. They're just not the best defense in the country like they've been in the past. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, they, they give up less yards per play than, than Auburn does. We, we went from number one in the country on defense and 80th in offense to number two in offense and 14th in defense. I'll take that swap. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I agree. We're top 15 at both. Auburn number 32 in turnover margin, LSU number 19. So both teams pretty good at taking care of the football and getting some uh, some takeaways. Taking it away. I, I think, like, Booby Whitlow is out. Yeah, they look great against Arkansas last week. There, there are still deficiencies on this team. I like LSU a lot this week. Yeah, I do too. I did. Minus 11, I don't think that's near enough points. No. So I, I've got them to cover, of course. In- I think they win. I think they cover. Um, last week is the first week that they didn't score 42 points or more. And uh, I don't know that they're going to do it this week. But I'm really hoping they at least match what they put up last week. So. I think I think they could. I, th- I mean, I think they probably will. This this offense is so much fun to watch right now. It it most certainly is. And they're all they're saying the right things. You know, yeah. all all people asked about this week in the, in a lot of the press conference I've been watching and, and stuff when they talked to the coaches and the players was, you know, what about Alabama? What about Alabama? Because they're already seeing this clash. And if we we're playing Arkansas, you can ask us about Alabama. But we're playing Auburn. That's a real team. Yeah. You can't just. It's you a tough you can't just overlook them, man. You can't just olay them. You get got. And I like that Joe Burrow's like, we we don't overlook this. T- what are you talking about? Like, this is how you get beat. I mean, he openly said that. We'll get our butts whipped if we overlook them. And I appreciate that. Because he's he's been young. He's young. And he's been cocky. And, he, and I like his swagger. But he's smart enough to know. He's, he's business when he needs yeah, to. Yeah. We, we have a job to do. And while I, I want to go out and whip their butt, I fully understand if I think I can just walk down there, show up on Saturday, and us just do it, then that's it how we're going to get our butt whipped. Yeah. It and he knows that. that. And, I, and I have a strong appreciation for that. that and I'll tell you this, that comes from leadership. That's oh, not yeah. just him. The coaches around him, the people in his life, he's been around this game forever. And, and I think that all has value. No, I, I agree 100%. 100%. Let's move into the next one. There's three massive games this week. I completely agree. Notre Dame at Michigan. This is a pick 'em. Yep. A pick 'em. Yep. Now, Michigan opened up with a two and a half point favorite, two yep. point favorite. Yes, sir. Um, and it obviously all swung back. Uh, Notre Dame at one point was a one point favorite. Then a yeah, few sharks kind of came in on that one. Yep. Uh, it's 6.30 p.m. on ABC. It's in Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. Notre Dame. Number one in the country in turnover margin. Michigan is number 112. Yep. I mean, it's just, oh, is it back to Michigan minus one? I, I just looked it up. Yeah, it's just yeah. one one betting place has a Michigan minus one. So it's it's going to swing back and forth between those two fairly regularly, yeah. I would imagine. You're looking for a winner. Uh, the biggest discrepancy that we've got here, uh, Notre Dame's offensive yards per play, they're number 13 in the country, 6.94. Michigan's defensive yards per play, number 16. So you, you've got that pretty even. <coughs> the The difference here is Notre Dame, with their defensive yards per play, is number 35. So yeah, pretty good. Yep. Pretty good. Excuse me. Michigan's offensive yards per play is 5.47. That's number 85 in the well, country. Yeah, we know they're all. But see, now, like that, their but offense, I, we, need to be able to, we need to be able to cut their season in half. 
Okay, I want to know what their offensive yards per play are in the last like three games, because what they did against Army, what they've done the first part of the year where they look like trash, this looks like a completely different offense. I mean, it didn't. Would you agree? It, it didn't to start last week. Well, they finished last week with it. But they, fine. but they I finished. Mean, the I, I, how did they finish the game? I don't care. I, I don't care if you have a couple of three and outs. That happens. Hell, else you couldn't yeah. get it in. You know, in the end zone against Mississippi State for the first you know half of the game. I and then the wheels came off. So I, I think it. I think it matters. I think it matters here. Uh, I think Notre Dame's offense against Michigan's defense is a really good matchup. I think it's a great matchup. I think Notre Dame's defense against Michigan's offense is way slanted towards Notre Dame. That might be. And then with the turnover margin the way it is, Notre Dame is number one in the country at at getting takeaways and not giving the ball up. And Michigan, and you don't think any of that stuff is ever fluky. And at some point I, no, in time, it, it works it's, itself out in the wash. It's definitely fluky, but there is something to not being able to hold on to the football. I agree with that. And Michigan can't hold on to the football. Like, okay. this is not like interceptions and all that. This is, they they get flustered and they just lose the ball. And it has, now they did it much more at the beginning of the season, but it's it's continuing to happen. And, you know, they're not forcing a lot of takeaways uh, I I mean, I love Notre Dame in this spot. That's the part it of the scares game I me think to, eventually will change. It, it scares Dame's me. It's not going to be perfect. Yeah. They're going to get the ball taken away at some point in time, and Michigan's going to start getting takeaways. At some point in time, takeaways kind of tend to always even out. Yeah. So I don't like looking at all of those stats because I don't know that they matter. You know, I think which you, Which direction are you leaning in this? I, same direction I lean every time this comes up. And I've been wrong on all of them. But Lean, Lean and Harbaugh, huh? Yeah. Did you yeah. see the story that came out uh, today yeah. from Football Scoop that Harbaugh is looking for an exit strategy? Yeah, you look, I mean, you're I looking know. around. I don't think there's okay. anything wrong with that. I think I think people have called him, and I think he's taken the call. Yeah. I, think, I think somebody got creative with how they're going to write a headline and how they're going to write a story and said he's looking for an exit strategy. But every year he gets calls about the NFL. He's gotten them every year. Yeah. Not not one single off. First year at Michigan, bad, not good. He still was getting NFL calls. Yeah. Not so, because he was so good in the NFL. Yes. Like, yeah. So um, I, I think, I think can he, would he take an NFL job? Sure. Would he listen to offers out right now? Absolutely. Yeah. But but I don't know that that has any weight or bearing into this. If Notre Dame goes in there and kicks their butt, Notre Dame earned that win, and it's not Michigan overlooking them and Harbaugh checking out. And if Harbaugh ends up winning the game, then that then it didn't matter anyway. Now you you got a valid point there. So I I do want to look up real quick. Let's let's go on and move into the next next game. Okay. And this is a big one every year. For whatever reason, it's kind of lost some luster this year. Penn State minus six and a half at Michigan State, two thirty p.m. on ABC. It's at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, and Penn State has not had a lot of success uh, against Michigan State here recently. Uh, it, tell me, go ahead and tell me your leanings on this. Penn, like what? Penn State's too good. You just think they're too good. See, and, and I, Michigan State's not good enough. Uh, yeah. I'll I'll be shocked if Michigan State. Hangs with them. Let's see. Like I know Michigan State has won the last two years. Sure. Um, okay. Let's see, and it and it's really like it's a strange thing. That's why I'm wanting to look it up, and I should have looked it up beforehand. But uh, it it's it just seems like there we go. It is the land grant trophy that is presented to the win. Like this is a real real time rivalry, and. Let's see, Michigan State won the last two years. Penn State won at home. But as far as playing in East Lansing, uh, Penn State has not won there since 2009. So, just something to toss out there. Uh, D'Antonio, like, always seems to have his team ready for Penn State. I don't know what it is. I think he tries to get his team ready every week. Well, yeah. And I think he's a really good coach. But I think he's hurt himself this year because he didn't make any changes at all. And so, this is the same team they've had last year and if they can't beat you on defense they're not going to beat you i was amazed this was under a touchdown like i'm taking penn state here yes um 
But man, like I would have felt so much better if this was like seven and a half or seven, you know. Then to take Michigan State. Like if I was going to take Michigan State, I'd like. Well, yeah, you want as many points as you can get if you want to take the dog. Well, yeah, I got that. That makes sense. I got that. Um, I'm not following the logic. Well, because it, if it's under, like I, I could see Penn State winning by a touchdown. I, yeah, okay. So that's that's my logic. <laughs> if they win by a touchdown and it's six and a half, that means Penn State covers. Okay. So if it's seven or seven and a half. But as the dog, you always want more points. I understand that. And as the that. favorite, you want it to be as small as possible. That's, it is. I'm, I'm not. Okay. No, I, I'm <laughs> with you. I'm not. This is. Damn it. <laughs> it is way too late. I'm it not following late. logic. Uh, well, well, I guess I am. The logic is perfect. Yeah, the logic actually worked out really well. Let's move into game number five. Washington State at Oregon. This is our fifth big game. Uh, we picked this over some of the other ones because it's a prime letdown spot for Oregon here. Uh, Oregon might not a be four- a letdown spot either. Mike Leach might come in here and take this thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, he's been known to do that. Oregon is a 14-point favorite. It's 9.30 p.m. on ESPN, so you'll get to watch all the other football and then Pac-12 co- after dark. Cozy up at home, Pac-12 after dark in Autzen Stadium in Eugene, Oregon. What channel is this on? ESPN. Good. Thank you. Uh, this is not a picked, uh, Pac-12 network game. Thank you. So, uh, Washington State is 4-1 and one straight up, 5-0 and oh against the spread in their last five against Oregon. Washington State's offense. It, for all the losing, all the crap that's going on this year, offense still number four in the country in yards per play, 7.68 yards. Uh, Oregon's defense, though, number seven in yards per play. They're only giving up 4.28. They have played an offense like this. Uh, no. No, they have not. Not even Washington last week. No, it's it, night and day different. Correct. Completely different. Oregon offensive yards per play, number 31. And Washington State's defensive yards per play number 108. So that's where the big problem is. Um, Washington State, if they can't get the ball moving, they can't stop anybody. Oh, no. Yeah. Oregon's going to score a ton. Yeah. I don't know what the over is. I guess I can find out. I have this machine that tells me all this information. Turnover margin, Washington State's number 41, Oregon number 4. Um, 64 and a half. That's not enough. You don't think so? I don't think it's it's a, I don't know, it's still kind of a high number. Okay. And I, I tend to trust Oregon's defense. Mm. But, I mean, if Oregon who, who if played? Oregon puts up 50 points by themselves. Who they played? I mean, okay, you got a point. You got a point. Um, all right, so it's it's sitting at 14. I'm, I'm going to roll with Washington State here because I, I think with USC coming up next week, they just got done playing Washington – Washington State has not looked great this season. This could be the look ahead. This could be the letdown after the big win at Washington. And you're already gearing up for USC because there's talk about the possibility of game day coming to USC and all this kind of, or coming to that game. You call it look ahead. I call it the Pac-12. Nobody knows what the hell they're doing. I shouldn't even ask you about your pick on on any of these Pac-12 dogs. I, you, I mean, I you hey, do it. How well did we do last week? Did pretty damn well. How well did we do? I don't even remember. I I'm, I know that Cal got the outright win. Arizona State did not cover. Thanks, Herm. Um, I don't remember uh, exactly going. what else went on. Keep talking. Where Arizona Arizona did not cover. Um, because USC beat the absolute breaks off of those guys. UCLA won outright covered. Oregon State won outright covered. Washington did not cover. Did I not think cover. that game was a three. <clears throat> Arizona State did not cover. Colorado did not. Colorado did not. So I went three and three, and but three outright wins. That's not bad. No. I went two and four with two outright wins. UCLA, Oregon State. Yeah, it was two and four. But two, two outright four. wins and, and With big two money lines. Monster money line wins. Yeah. So, anyway. Worked out okay. Uh, let's think. move into the rapid fire segment. I'm going to rapid fire. Yeah. Like, for real. No no long soliloquies here. Texas at TCU. Line opened up. Texas uh, plus two. It is now Texas minus one. Playing at TCU, we understand Gary Patterson 
Thoughts? Uh, my guy, Les Miles, almost got Texas. See, I think that was personal. I said I wasn't going to talk. Hey, no, no, I forgot. That's what one of the games was talking about. My guy, Les Miles, see, he heard all that noise, all you Texas guys talking about me. All that trash. He did everything he could to avenge me personally. I believe that. <laughs> he couldn't do it. But you know what? Gary Patterson will. There you go. That's <laughs> I swear. I don't know why you do this every week. All right. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Oklahoma State at Iowa State. <clears throat> Iowa State a ten and a half point favorite. Uh, Iowa State has looked fantastic so far this year. They finally get to come back home. Oklahoma State they got some problems. Spencer Sanders really looking like a freshman quarterback right now. He he looked outstanding to start the season. He gets into conference play. It it and yes he has played against some really good teams. So I think that has more to do with it than anything else. Baylor is not a Big 12 team. Baylor is built to beat Big 12 teams. We've talked about yeah. this. Yeah. Ohio, uh, Iowa State is a Big 12 team. They are. This defense won't be like that defense. I don't know I if I agree with that. I love Mike Gundy. <laughs> you, you're taking all of them 10 and a half, I'm you? taking all of them. That's it. <laughs> I'll all take right. more if they'll give them to me. Let's see if you'll take this one. For Gary. Boston College at Clemson. Clemson, it opened up 34 and a half. It is down to, what, 32 and a half? 33 and a half. 33 and a half. It's only dropped to one point. What are you talking about, man? That's a, man, I saw it at 32 and a half earlier. No, you didn't. So 33 and a half, there it is. Well, I mean, on, on yours, it's 33 and a half. Either way, that's a lot of points. Boston College, uh, look, they are still putting up some pretty outstanding offensive numbers. Um, it's 34 and a half at some places. And that one says it opened 36 and a half. And it did. That's what it did. I guess, it, you know, it, it probably opened 36 and a half at Circa. I guess. Because that's where all these lines open at. Yeah. And not the offshore stuff, but I guess they read it based off that. Either way, either way, Boston College comes in. Boston College's offense, even without Brown, has been pretty good. They're still moving the football. Uh, I don't know that there's any way that they win the game, nope. especially in Death Valley. Nope. But, you know. It's a stadium. Like, you, you're telling me, uh, yeah, the the other, the, the, the non. The other, other. It's, it's a stadium. It's a beautiful place. It's an incredible game day experience. Yes, it is. Awesome. <laughs> uh, I would probably take Boston College here. I'm going to take would be, all these points, too. I would be terrified of it. Because Clemson has been making sure that they hit that number. Just saying. Just saying. Let's uh, let's jump into Oklahoma at Kansas State. Kansas State loves to slow down football games. Uh, I like Chris Kleiman. He he's hadn't done great, but he has pulled off some wins that people wouldn't expect. They got the win over TCU last week, which neither of us expected that. That's right. Um, but Kansas State, pretty good. They're... Like twenty three and a half point underdogs here. Eh, I I don't know if it's enough because I think that Oklahoma has way more speed than they do. Yeah, completely agree. But Kansas State got some big hog mollies on the line. Like this would be a complete stay away from me. Yeah, that's I'm, oh I'm in the same. If boat. you made me take it, I'd take the points. Just just because I'm hoping for a close game yeah. or just some type of let down, slow down, Jalen. Tweet an ankle or something, and it's like, all right, let's let's pull him, let's sit down, let's go. Yeah. So, all right, moving on. Next one, UCF at Temple, AAC game. Uh, a lot, a lot of good AAC games every week. This one seems to be the best of this week. Temple got drubbed at SMU last week. They seem to play better at home. Like I, I don't know what the difference is, but. I mean, they beat Maryland at home. They beat Memphis at home. They've lost at Buffalo, lost at SMU, and neither of those were even close. UCF getting to travel again. Last time they went and faced a uh, a stout defense on the road in the AAC, they lost at Cincinnati. Uh, I don't know if Temple's defense is as good or as big as Cincinnati's, but, I mean, this is a prime spot. UCF has given up 10.5 points here. Yeah, I was shocked at the line. I wouldn't play it either. But, I mean, yeah, I, I think I think this is going to be a closer game than that. I think I think the same thing. 
I just I, I don't know why you Temple's would... a really good football team. Yeah. And you're right. They play great at home. Yeah. And Rod Carey as an underdog is just ridiculous. Like he was the same thing at Northern Illinois. Uh let's move on. Duke at North Carolina. This is an interesting spot. The reason I put this on here as an interesting game is because if North Carolina loses this game, they will be three and five. That's it. like for all the talk about Mac Brown and and this team coming back and you know, Sam Howell's great and et cetera et cetera. It, like five losses, I think people would still think that they're pretty good, but man, five losses in this conference. This is a, this is a rough spot, rough spot. They're uh, they're four point favorites over Duke. Now I said it last week. Like Virginia has Duke's number, just absolutely does, but. David Cutcliffe, as as an underdog, like that that man's that man's legit, absolutely legit. Let's uh let's close up with this one. South Carolina at Tennessee. Will Muschamp is undefeated against Tennessee. Do you know that? Yep. I you think it continues? I don't think Tennessee's quarterback is playing. Then no. more. Uh, I think. Garantano. Then yes, then yes, it continues. No, yeah, they don't lose this game. Yeah. Yes, I I think I agree. South Carolina is a a pretty good football team. Like a lot of people gave them crap for that North Carolina loss. You know, Bentley breaks his foot. Uh, they got to bring in Helinski. Helinski still may not be completely healthy. I don't know if it matters here. I think that they can. I think they can keep the streak going. You tell me. It's all right, one hundred percent, guys. Sorry about that. All right, it's all good. We uh, I think that's gonna wrap it up. That's uh that's it for the college football big game previews. Of course, go over to the website winningcureseverything.com. We've got the gambling picks uh or gambling pick'em football pick'em contest up. Uh so go check that thing out. It's free to sign up. It takes a couple of minutes, put in your name, email, and pick the 10 games for this week. You can win a prize from Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Uh find out more information about their six incredible sports books over at tunicatravel.com. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're watching on Facebook, hit that like button. Share the show out with your buddies. Tell everybody about it. If you're listening on the podcast, hit subscribe. Make sure you leave a nice review for us, especially on Apple Podcasts. I think that's going to wrap it up. Anything else? Sounds good. All right. We love you guys. We will see you again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.